Hey guys, welcome back. Today, let's have a look some different stones and, of course, knife sharpening demonstration, but especially for beginners in a very basic way. And our knife today is Masutani 170mm Nakiri knife, and it has a microchip right there. Um, I don't know if you can see it from the video, but um, it's there. It's it's very tiny little chip, not very big. But we're going to fix it today. And the knife has a core steel VG10 and heat treat about 60 Rockwell, and the cutting edge is quite straight. It's very good for beginner. There are many different stones in the market. Some has stands and some doesn't. And some stands can be separated from the stone and some it's fixed to the stone. Uh, like this one, this one, the stone and the stand can be separated. And this one, this one, the stone is fixed to the wooden stand. You cannot separate them. And this one as well, you can't separate them. The whetstone is fixed to the plastic stand, and the plastic stand has four uh, rubber foot underneath to uh, against slippery. And this one also uh, separatable. Um, it's like it's actually a combined stone. And the stone can be um, used both sides with different grade. And this one, it doesn't contain any stand. It's just a wet stone itself. But what I can do is, I can lock it on a rubber stand like this you just need to adjust the length and then screw in So now it's fixed. So next, let's talk about stability. You do want to keep the whetstone stable against any movement, but movement like this is not good. To avoid such movement, you need a wet towel underneath. Now it's very stable. You can work on it. Talking about knife sharpening, it is basically push and pull actions. You don't want to do it in the lower position because when you push the knife to the top end on the wet stone, your hands are 
most probably lift it up a little bit, and you will not sharpen the knife equally. Or you really want to bend your waist to keep your hands on the same surface. Just like this, and bend your waist down, and keep your hands on the same surface. So, what you need to do is to put the whetstone in the higher position, like what I'm doing right now to have a wooden block underneath the whetstone. It solved the problem. You don't need to bend your waist, vary down to keep your hands on the same surface, but with with this, you can do it very easily. I've seen a lot of knife sharpening masters in Japan. They put the whetstone in even higher position like this. There are two kinds of synthetic stones in the market. One is soaking stone, the other one is called splash stone, and this is soaking stone, meaning you need to put it into the water for at least fifteen minutes. I soak it in the water, and let's take a look. A lot of bubble coming out of the stone, and meaning the stone is now. Drinking a lot of water, it needs a lot of water. See, there is a lot of bubbles coming out of the stone, and what you need to do right now is just waiting, and you need to wait until there's no bubble comes out, and this would take about at least fifteen minutes. A splash stone. It does not require any soaking into the water. Only a few water on the surface, and it's good to go. And this one is a splash stone, non-water absorbent. Only a few water on the surface. It's good to go. See, the soaking stone down there.、Um, there are still a lot of bubbles coming out of the stone, and、uh, the non-water absorbent on top does not absorb any water. Let's take a look at this one and see how it works. I put some water on the surface. And see, the water goes away very quickly. It goes into the stone. And now, you tell me what kind of stone it is. It's a soaking stone. That's right. And now let's put the splash stone into the water and see how it goes. The water is still on it. Let's put it in and see. There is no bubble.
Uh, let's check the soaking stone. The bubbles are gone, meaning you can work on it now. If you take it out of the water, if the water stays, it means it's ready. So now I'm going to start with this splash one first. I've seen a lot of professional knife sharpeners. Uh, they've done a, a, a really good job and they uploaded their uh, knife sharpening demonstration on YouTube in a very professional way and they are very good. But um, I think for beginners and that would be very difficult because for beginners there are two things to consider uh, one is definitely the angle and the second one is the um, uh, stability during movement and the professional knife sharpeners will definitely do like this um, they First, they use the full length of the stone and they do the stroke on the stone and move the knife from left to right and right to left. But for beginners, um, their hands will definitely shake during the movement uh, like this. So once their hands are not stable, they will never ever get, the, get a clean cutting edge. Or instead, they can do the uh, uh, short motion like this, not to use the full length of the stone but use the stone part by part and for example now I'm using the the down part of the stone or the middle part or the top part of the stone but make sure you use the stone equally otherwise the stone will bend either uh, on the top top part or at the bottom part or in the middle part and once the stone is bent, um, it's difficult to get the clean edge on your knife. And this knife has a very straight cutting edge and only a little curve on the, on the tip. So it makes it easier for the beginners to start with. What I'm doing now is the very basic technique. Um, I do the long stroke from the tip to the heel. Uh, you might want to hold the knife like I do, um, thumb on the heel and the other finger on the spine. And to lock down an angle and make sure the knife is quite stable during the movement. And the other hand, the finger on the blade, just uh, light pressure, not too much pressures. And do the long stroke from the bottom of the stone to the top side.
and you do need to count the number of the strokes. And after several strokes, you need to check the burr and see if you know the whole cutting edge is has the burr on it. Now the uh, the heel um, does not have any burr, so I need to uh, work on the heel a little bit. My thumb is working on it. Put a uh, little pressure on the heel, so I make sure it has the contact to the to the whetstone. And now check the burr. It has the burr on the heel. Now it's ready to work on the other side. Make sure the same angle and not to move up and down. The other hand on top of the blade, light pressure, not too much pressure. Move slowly and you want to hold the knife like I do, the thumb on the spine and finger on the heel. Yeah. Okay, slowly and slowly. Think about the angle. And here, you need to pay more attention. Your knife, the tip of your knife, will never ever go off the stone like that. Always stop right here. Stop right here. And stop right here. Once the tip falls down on a stone, it will not only damage the stone, it will also damage the tip as well. So, you need to pay attention to this. And don't forget to count the number of strokes. And this will make both sides 50-50. Now check the burr on the other side. Get a little bit more water on the stone and continue on this side. Remember, all the fingers put the pressure equally on the blade. Okay, let's check the the chip and see if I fix it. Yep, it seems it's gone. Perfect. Uh, since I already soaked the other stone, so let's try it. Mm. 
So again, you don't need to be fast. Start slowly, like this. And be careful when you reach the top end of the stone. You need to stop right here, not to to the fall down on the on the stone. Otherwise, you damage your cutting edge as well. So again, go slowly. Keep the same angle, same pressure, not too much pressure. Count the number of strokes. Uh, once the stone gets dry, just get some water on it. Um, if you use only the middle part of the stone, the stones get bent.、Uh, but if you only sharpen the knife in this area, it will be fine. Like the other side as well. Only the middle part; it will be okay.、Uh, if the stone is bent in the middle, and、uh, you do the long stroke like this from the bottom to the to the top, and actually the middle area, the knife and stone has no contact, and you. Probably won't sharpen the middle part of the cutting edge, but over sharpen the tip and the heel because the stone is not flat. So it is very important that you use the most part of the stone, not one part all the time. And、um, it's also important that you flatten the stone after use. So make sure the stone is flat, and、uh, you're you're gonna get the the very nice cutting edge. And I'm now doing the、uh, five strokes each side, and you can start with ten, and depending on the situation of your cutting edge. Okay, some more water on the stone, and、uh, the number of strokes on each side comes down from five to three, and then one stroke on each side. Meaning, you are getting close to finish.
Now is the one on each side to make sure the cutting edge is 50-50. So equal on both sides. And now checking the burr on both sides and make sure it has no burr on each side. After all the works on the uh, 800 grit stone, I'm now switching to the 4000 grit finishing stone. Um, this 4000 grit finishing stone is a splash one as well. So, only a few water on the surface. Make sure your hand is stable on the same angle and the other hand put the same pressure on the blade. I start with 10 strokes on each side first. The other side, 10 strokes as well. And remember where to start on the stone and where to finish on the stone, where you have to finish on the stone.
actually the、uh, high-grade finishing stone does not really create any burr to the other side. So what you need to do is just to remember how many strokes you you've done on each side. And now the、uh, number of strokes it comes down again from ten to five on each side. Now the the number of strokes comes down from five to three. It's getting close to one stroke each side. And now I'm switching to one stroke on each side.
Okay. Finished. Let's have a look at the cutting edge. It is shiny polished and uh, very equal, very clean as well. Now, let's check the sharpness. Hey, it is smooth. Yeah, slicing the paper smoothly. However, after the sharpness, the knife still cannot do a push cut. Actually, the push cut is what razor sharp will do. However, if you do only a few strokes on the leather, do the uh, strapping work, uh, only a few strokes, and you get the push cut sharpness. Just like this, just like what you have done on the sharpening stone. The same technique, same angle, and just get the uh, cutting edge finer. Okay, um, let's get back to the same paper and see how the push cut performance will be. Hey guys, thank you for watching.